Hey everybody, so in today's video we're going to use JavaScript, HTML, and CSS to create a dice roller program. This is an optional project. You will need some images of dice to work with. If you're able to find some images of dice, I would save them somewhere, maybe on your desktop. Once you have images of your dice, we're going to create a new folder. New folder, I'll name my folder dice underscore images. Then take all of your dice images move them to that folder. And now we are ready to begin. We'll create all of the HTML elements that we'll need. I will create a div section. This div will have an ID of container to contain our program. I'll include an h1 heading with text of dice roller. After this h1 element, I'll create a label. The label will have text of number of dice. Afterwards, I'll use an input element. I'm going to zoom in a little bit temporarily. With this input element, I'll type in a number of dice I would like, such as 1, 2, 3. However, I can type in characters, which I would like to avoid. I will set the type attribute of the input element to be number. We're indicating to the user to select a number and not type in anything. Although there are ways to circumvent this, this will be good enough for now. For the input element, we can set a default value. I will set the value attribute to equal 1 for the default. We can go below 0. I'll set a minimum with the min attribute. Min equals 1. We can't go below 1, but we can select any number 1 or above. Now we'll create a button. The button will have text of roll dice. The button will have its on click attribute. I keep on spelling on lick. On click attribute set to a JavaScript function. Let's say roll dice. We'll still need to define this function in JavaScript. After our button, I'll create two div sections. The first will have an ID of dice result. This will display some text, the numbers of the dice we roll. The second development will be for the images. ID dice images. And that is all the HTML that we'll need. Let's head to our CSS file and I'll zoom back to 100%. Let's select our ID of container, hashtag container. I will change the font family to a sans serif font such as Arial with a backup of sans serif. I will text align center, increase the font size. In this project, I'm going to use REM instead of EM because we'll be working with a lot of different font sizes. EM is the font size relative to the parent. REM is for the root. For this specific project, I'll stick with REM, and I will set the font weight to be bold. Let's style our button next. We are selecting our button. I'll increase the font size of the button to be 1.5 REM. I'll add a little bit of padding, 10 pixels by 15 pixels. I will set the border radius to round the corners. 10 pixels, remove the border because it's ugly, border none, pick a background color for the button, I'll pick something blue, but I like using HSL values, something like that looks good, I will change the font color to be white. And I will set the font weight to be bold. Not bad. When I hover my cursor over the button, I will change the cursor to be a pointer. Let's change the background color of the button when we hover over it. We are selecting the hover pseudo class of the button. Let's take our background color. I'll increase the lightness by 10%. So that should change when we hover over the button. Now when I click on the button, I'll increase the lightness even more. 
to show that it's active. With our button, we will select the Active Pseudo class. I'll set the lightness to be 70%. So when we click on the button, it should flash momentarily, which it is. Let's style the input element, because I can barely see it. With our input element, I need to scroll down. Let's increase the font size to 2REM. I'll set a width of 150 pixels. Text align center and font weight bold. With our HTML file, we do have two empty div elements currently. We'll style these at the end. Once we get our images to populate, we'll style that last. With the onclick attribute of the button, we set a function of roll dice. Now we need to define it. Within our JavaScript file, we will define a function to roll dice. We have a lot of constants to declare. I'll create a constant for the number of dice we would like. What's the value of this input element? I will define const num of dice. What is the number of dice we need to roll? Equals document dot get element by id the id of this input element is i actually forgot what was it oh we didn't set an id okay let's do that okay so for the input element the id will be num of dice num of dice but i would just like the value I will access the value of whatever this input element is. For the next constant, we're going to get the dice result. This empty div section. Const dice result equals, let's copy this line of code, but we don't need the value. We just need that ID, dice result. Then let's do this with dice images. So we can copy this, paste it, const dice images. The ID was dice images. I'll create two empty arrays, const values. This will be an empty array. We'll store all of the dice rolls, the numbers. Then we'll need an array of images, const images. This will be for the images of the dice. At this point in time, we're going to create a for loop that will loop once for every dice that we roll. We have to generate a random number between one and six for each dice we're rolling. If I'm rolling three dice, I need a for loop to iterate three times. Let's create a for loop. Let i equal zero. Continue this as long as i is less than the number of dice. Then increment i by one. During each iteration, I need to generate a random number between 1 and 6. I'll store that within a constant. Const value, that will be the random number, equals math.random method. This generates a random number between 0 and 1, but I'm going to multiply it by 6 to give us a random number between 0 and 5. It's not going to be a whole number, though, so I'm going to round it using math.floor. Then enclose this part of our equation. Now we should get a random number between 0 and 5, but I need a random number between 1 and 6, so I'll add 1 to the end, plus 1. So now we'll get a random number between 1 and 6. Just to be sure that this all works, temporarily I'm going to console.log our value. If I roll 1 dice, we should get one random number. 1. Let's try 3 dice. 5, 4, 6, 3, 2, 4. All right, we don't need this console.log statement anymore. We know that it's working. With these values, I'm going to push them into our array of values. Take our array of values, use the push method, add our value that we randomly generate during each iteration. And let's see if this works. I'm going to console.log my array of values just to be sure that there's some numbers in there. Let's roll four dice. Inspect, console. I have an array of four elements. 
the number 6326. So that does work. All right, here's the tricky part. I need to take my array of images, use the push method. I will create a string representation of an HTML element. I need to get one of the images found within this dice images folder. Using angle brackets, I will create an image element. I will set the source equal to that folder name. So my folder name was dice underscore images. Dice underscore images slash. So with my images, it might be different for you. Mine are labeled appropriately, you know, for one, two for two, three for three, so on and so forth. I will use a placeholder, add our value, this number, then follow this with the file extension of the images. My images are PNG images. Do pay attention to that. After we exit this for loop, we should have an array of HTML images. Then we're going to take our dice result constant, change the text content to equal all of the values. I'll use a template string. I will display the word dice at a placeholder. I'm going to join all of the elements together, all of the values. To do that, you can take your array of values, use the built-in join method, and I will join them all by a certain character or characters. I will join all of these numbers by a comma and a space. Let's see if this works. I'm going to roll one dice. Yep, dice. I rolled a one. I rolled a four. I rolled a three. Let's roll two dice. I have two comma five, four comma six, two comma two comma three, six comma three comma two. Then we have to get the images. Let's take our dice images constant, access the inner HTML, set this equal to take our array of images, use the built-in join method. I'm not going to join them by any character. I'll join them by an empty string. And let's see if this works. I would like one dice. Yeah, there it is. Two and three. Now, for some reason, if your dice isn't displaying with our image element, I will set the alt attribute to equal a string of dice space at a placeholder value. Let's say I get the folder name wrong. I will rename this as dice image. I'll attempt to display one dice. Dice three, dice four, dice three. So in case our image can't display for some reason, we'll at least display the alternative text. This is good for troubleshooting and for screen readers for accessibility. Let me correct the name of the folder again. So with our dice images, at least for me, they're kind of big and I'd like to space them out a little bit. Our last step is we're gonna go back to our CSS style sheet. I will select the ID of dice result. That's gonna be for this title right here. I'll add some margin around this text. Right now it's kind of compressed. I will set margin of 25 pixels. Then with our dice images, ID dice images, with my ID of dice images, take each child image, set a width of 150 pixels should be good. Yeah, they're a lot smaller now. I'll add a little bit of margin too. Margin, five pixels. Yeah, that's not a bad looking program. All right, everybody. So that was a dice roller program you can make using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Impress your friends. And that's pretty much it.